general. And the reason for that is because ever since 1980, Pennsylvania has elected a Republican attorney general. Kathleen Kane was the exception. I think that um, with the issues and the drama and the problems, that I think ruined that office for the Democrats for years to come. And I think that no matter what happens, wh whoever wins that Democratic primary, uh, there's going to be a Republican in that office come November. Well, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. but, but, you know, I'm, I'm more of a numbers guy, and so I, I've been watching the polls as well as uh, some of the issues and, and who's supporting who. Um, obviously, uh, Josh Shapiro is very strong here on the East. Uh, the Philadelphia area and his, his, I think, Montgomery County from where he's from, uh, and probably up and down the, 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 the eastern side of the state. Uh, and he takes that. Uh, Mr. Zapala is very strong out in the West, as would be expected, because he's originally from Pittsburgh and, and has served out there. Um, the, the interesting thing is that neither candidate has served much in terms of, of actual courtroom experience. The gentleman in the middle, Mr. Manganelli, is the gentleman who keeps on arguing that I've got the experience, I've tried the cases. He's strongest in the center of the state. but. He also shares that with Mr. Shapiro. And I think that when it comes down to the actual vote, uh, because of the East and the center moving towards Shapiro in the polls, I think it knocks out Zapala come the East, because or the West. Once you get past Pittsburgh, there's not a strong enough vote out there. Uh, but that leads to another problem that, that we'll have to bring up later on in, the, in this show, and that's the turnout. But I think Zapala has made some inroads here in Luzerne and Lackawanna County, and you might see him come out pretty strong in this area. Uh, the interesting thing about Peters and um, Rafferty is that they both worked in the Attorney General's office at some point during their careers. Yeah. These three Democrats did not, and I think that's going to be something, that's going to be a, a factor, too, because, you know, the three Democrats are arguing about who, pros well, the, the, who prosecuted who right. and the whole bit and everything, who has the most experience. Shapiro left the state legislature to become a county commissioner and I thought that was you know kind of different because I mean you know that's right. kind of like a reverse type thing although of course even no, normally the other way yeah went from you know state right. representative to you know um, uh, DA or county right, just right. attorney but he became a judge so I don't know what Shapiro's end game is in this whole thing you know now do you think uh, we'll throw this out there's the elephant in the room for Joe mm -hmm. Peters mm -hmm. because he's from Lackawanna County right Will he be haunted by the Lackawanna County Attorney Generals of the past, the Ernie Priet controversy, his problems, Kathleen Kane recently? Will he be haunted by that? More importantly, I think he's, he's tainted a little bit because he served within the Kane administration right. his first year. And then he stepped out before any of the uh, uh, explosive events, shall we say, happened. Um, Joe Peters has a, a marvelous... Uh, record right. uh, with which to run on. Uh, but going back to checking, uh, and again, I went to Secret uh, uh, or Open Secrets to check and see how much money is being spent. Joe Peters has spent practically nothing on this. And I have not seen really anything in regards to Peters so far. Uh, not that I've seen that, that much uh, either from Rafferty, but Rafferty's got a, a, a boatload of, of uh, endorsements, endorsements yeah. from the Fraternal Order of Police, from the Republican Party mm -hmm. of Pennsylvania and so forth. And these are the establishment people that are going to vote on, on Election Day. And see, Peters is doing a social media campaign. The thing is, Peters was actually recruited to go into Kane's office when I think the 15th press secretary quit. Right. And so I think that's what's happening with the uh, with that. Is he going to be haunted by Lackawanna County? I don't think so. Because I've talked to a number of Democrats who have actually switched their party registration to vote for Peters in the Republican primary. That's so strongly that they feel about Joe Peters. So I think that's going to have some kind of effect, maybe a positive effect. But Dr. Sosar is right. You know, you need a lot of money to run a statewide race. And, and turnout's a big thing. Who's he going to pay to get the people out in terms of, you know, the yard signs and things like that? Right. So I think he's at a disadvantage advantage there, but his social media is all over the place. So we'll see if that's a test. You know, it's interesting when Joe Peters took the position with Kathleen Kane in the early days, uh, during right. the uh, honeymoon era. Right. Some have speculated that he took that position not only because he could do it, 
He had the credentials, the track record, but also to get some name recognition statewide. So somewhere down the road, if Kathleen Kane decides not to run or she ran for re-election, right. Now he's more known statewide. But he always wanted to run for this race, though. You know, in 2004, he really wanted to run for attorney general. Right. But, you know, they gave the endorsement to Tom Corbett, so he ran for state treasurer. So he has run statewide before. So, yeah, but yeah, I think you're right about that. Yeah. Yeah. And I've got, I've got to wonder one thing, and I haven't really seen that much of it. i got to be honest, I, I haven't had the opportunity to check it. As far as any support that he's getting from, uh, especially the newspapers, Mm -hmm. uh, and endorsements from newspapers like the Philadelphia Inquirer, uh, the Pittsburgh Gazette, things like that uh, are extremely important. Uh, and I haven't seen a lot of endorsements really for anybody as of yet, right. but uh, these are the kind of things that, that Joe Peters would need, I think, if he's, if he's going to mount anything. The social media is good, but that only gets to a small portion of yeah. what the voters are going to be. And sometimes newspapers make their endorsements like the day before the election, yeah. so check the papers yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> right. So, Well, we're going to take a quick break and continue our discussion on the primary election, which is just two days away. And as we head to break, uh, the Pennsylvania Secretary of State, Pedro Cortez, stopped by our studios to talk about the upcoming election. Hear what he has to say, and we'll be back right after this. Uh, it's very historic. Pennsylvania has a role. We are the largest state that is going to be voting next Tuesday, the 26th. So you know, all the eyes uh, are on Pennsylvania. And I'm happy that we are going to provide a good election, a good experience for the voters. Welcome back to Newsmakers from your local election headquarters. We're discussing the primary election two days away. Jane Ann Bugged along with Andy Mahalshik, Dr. David Sosar, David Yonkai. And another race that we had the opportunity to talk to the candidates was in uh, the uh, Congress, District 17, uh, Matt Cartwright running for re-election, facing uh, two, re two Republicans, uh, Matt Connolly and Glenn Geisinger. Here's a little bit of the interviews that we had with him. Listen in. But for the most part, we have become so overregulated, so overtaxed, that we are shutting down the ability for people who want to pursue a dream from doing it. That's the main issue. Renew the American dream is my campaign slogan, and that's the main reason why. Well, <laughs> people definitely want to get back to national security. They're scared, and I don't blame them. Uh, we, they want a country where they know that their borders are safe and that the people that are coming in are coming here with the right intentions. So I think that has to be our first priority. You have to work at it. You have to work at, at uh, getting along. Um, I'm proud to say uh, I have worked at that. I've made a lot of, you know, I'm on the Democratic side of the aisle and I'm proud of it. Um, but I think it's, it's, um, it's an article of faith that when people send you to Washington, they want you to uh, act like an adult. <laughs> Now, of course, this is really a preview of the general election, right. other than uh, Connolly and Geisinger. Do you think, uh, speculation, do the Republican candidates have a chance of knocking off Matt Cartwright? In the general, of course? Well, let me address it. Either this. one? Well, I don't think in the general at all, and I'll tell you why. Because no. historically, if you combine 140 years of history, okay, Lackawanna County has always had their own congressman, Luzerne County has always had their own congressman, mm -hmm. and that's a tough thing. Plus the registration is 70 percent. <laughs> so, you know, and uh, Kondorski was the congressman here, and then of course the d district got changed around, and of course Barletta beat him. So, you know, they've always been used to having a congressman, and the district was gerrymandered for Tim Holden. And, you know, uh, what, what right. carried Cartwright to victory was uh, Lackawanna and Luzerne County, LULAC, if you will. And so, you know, that type of thing, it, it's, it's going to be very, very hard to beat, I think. Yeah, I think you're watching a contest right now to see which one of the Republican candidates loses to Matt Cartwright. Um, I, I would agree with you that the, 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 the whole congressional district has been established for a Democrat to begin with. Matt Cartwright has served already. He has that ability and experience to speak as the incumbent and to deal with himself as the incumbent. Uh, these two gentlemen, and, and especially Mr. Geisinger, uh, Mr. Connolly, uh, trying to catch up with, with, again, the numbers guy, uh, trying to take a look at some of his expenses so far. Uh, I, Open Secrets, again, has, has put, they don't even have him on the board. They only have they only have a Glenn Geisinger. Glenn Geisinger has and has been spending now approximately one hundred and twenty-one thousand dollars. You can see the signs around, and Glenn Geisinger 
Uh, why I think he, he's going to win is is because he's been out there. He's made a name for himself. And, and as well, he's got a Scranton connection. Again, his wife mm -hmm. is originally from Scranton. So that helps him up there, too. However, it, not enough to win an election. Uh, he is he is very close to a Tea Party kind of, of Republican, and I don't think that's going to sell in that congressional district. Well, Matt Conley, let me just say, tell you a little bit about Matt Conley. Matt Conley has some money aside, even though it's not right. been reported, but he will beg to differ with the two of us about whether the Democrats are going to win, because I had made that statement in another venue at another time, and he came up and he says, I'm going to beat him, I'm going to win. And he's very confident. And the contrast between the two um, Republican candidates candidates is striking in the sense that Connolly is a more conservative and Geisinger, while not a moderate, is still another conservative. And the sad part about this race is that both of them are articulate. Both of them are very intelligent. They are very passionate for what they believe in. And I don't understand why when you have a sitting congressman, the Republican Party will run two really, really good candidates because it's a shame that one of them has to lose yeah. to face off against Mark, Matt Cartwright. Either one, if either one of them wins, Matt Cartwright is probably going to have the most articulate challenger he has had since he started to run for office. They are good. And, yep. and if you check their websites, they're very professionally done. The issues they are very, very similar on. I think this is just going to be a choice between the name you know and who you're more familiar with and who you feel more comfortable with than it is going to be anything else. And Connolly had run before in the last race in line and carried all uh, four of the five uh, districts, except that Doc Moylan carried um, Schuylkill right. County. Right. So and Connolly had a good lead the last And time. I do want to remind everyone if they want to hear the whole interview that we had with the right. candidates around pahomepage.com under our Newsmakers link. What impact, if any, a lot of folks, we reported this, are switching from Republican I'm sorry, I'm sorry, from Democrat to Republican Party. The Trump factor, the Hillary Clinton, looks like they'll be the nominees in a general. Can that help either Republican or hurt Cartwright in any way? I think it's going to make this election, which is really off the charts to begin with, a much more difficult uh, election to try to read because, again, how many people are going to bullet vote just Hillary Clinton uh, or Bernie Sanders or one of the Republicans? Uh, how many people are going to go on out, as Dave mentioned before, just going to vote for a Joe Peters? Uh, how many people are really switching parties, as Andy just mentioned, because they want to make a difference in the Republican race? The undercard vote, I think, is going to be remarkably different than the presidential vote count. And then that depends upon, uh, is it the party faithful who are only going to vote for the undercard? Or is it going to be people who are unaccustomed to voting, uh, but simply because of Bernie or because of Trump that they want to vote? And they pull levers that are, they're not sure of, but they don't want to leave them blank. It could throw everything into a nightmare, actually, as to who wins and who loses. I think it's going to cut down maybe into Cartwright's lead, but not much. But I'd like to address the people who change their registration or who basically um, have, have, have uh, put a registration together for another candidate. I just want to say one thing, and I'm going to look into the camera by saying this. Come back in 2017. You're all excited about the presidential race yes. in 2016, yes. but studies have shown that the races for local offices, the participation rate goes lower. So thank you for changing your registration. Thank you for registering. But come back in 2017 because these races, all of them are important. That's true. And we're going to take a quick break and we're going to talk about voter turnout. And we're going to remind you that the polls open on Tuesday at 7 a.m., close at 8. Cast your vote. We encourage you all to vote. Watch your vote count on Eyewitness News. And stories on all the election coverage on pahomepage.com under our Newsmakers link. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Why Witness Newsmakers from your local election headquarters. Andy Mahalshik with Jan and Bugda, Dr. David Sozar, and David Yonkai from the Lulac Political uh, 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 Blog. <laughs> uh, we're talking about, we're two days away, finally away from the Pennsylvania primary. And I have never, well, I'm not never, I haven't seen this much excitement or maybe confusion as we head into a primary in Pennsylvania. Now that, not only because it means something this year, but just the whole dynamic, voter turnout. High voter turnout benefits what party? Lower voter turnout benefits what party? Dave. 
Well, I have a feeling that the organizations are for the various candidates are going to try to boost her enough turnout and I think you're going to see the Sanders people do the same thing the Clinton people it's going to be all about turnout but I think the endorsements and the um, sheer star power that Hillary Clinton has is going to help her in the state because I think that uh, regular registered Democrats the party faithful if you will are looking at Clinton as the possible nominee and I think you're going to see all the different little organizations out to try to help her. Sanders, I hate that, uh, that a lot of people are coming out for his speeches but I don't know if that would translate into turnout. He put a lot of money into New York and he put a lot of uh, ground game into New York and it just didn't work so I think turnout's going to be the case. And yeah. they're all visiting the area, uh, we're yeah. visiting the area of this past week so. But yeah. the younger voters, could the younger voters who seem to be very mobilized this year behind Bernie Sanders, could, could that lead him to a victory in Pennsylvania? No. And, and uh, it, it has energized younger voters, I will admit. Uh, but the younger voters still, uh, because of the time factor involved, uh, they go to speeches, they go to rallies, they carry the signs, but this is going to take place where a lot of uh, still uh, students are going to be in college and they're going to be taking, uh, if not taking final exams by that point, getting very close to it. Don't expect to see as many unless they're registered actually in the county and or have gotten an absentee ballot. I don't see quite the turnout of the young voter as one might think. Um, I also think as well, um, uh, all the people have been coming through here. The Donald Trumps are going to do very well here, uh, simply because this is the kind of state, like New York, that he, he, he'll do well in. And people are crossing over in some cases, and I would say as much for Trump as anybody else. Uh, Hillary Clinton is considered one of the hometown girls from this, uh, or women from this state. Uh, she won it over Barack Obama last time. I don't see any reason why uh, she would uh, lose this one to Bernie, Bernie Sanders. Sanders right? I don't see it. And, of course, we want to remind everybody for all the visits that were here this week, you can find them on pahomepage.com. We had a lot of coverage, a lot of uh, stopping by this week, a lot of excitement generated. How about the older voters? They're, they're very well informed. I know Andy did a, a stories this past yes, couple weeks about the older voters. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I went to Berwick Senior Citizen Center, and I think, and, and correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, you guys are political analysts. I think a lot of folks underestimate their knowledge of what's happening. They knew the issues. They're, of course, very opinionated, very strong opinions, oh, yeah. who they like, who whom they don't like. But they were really up on the issues, and, and well, they in, turn out to vote. In, in my time of being a political blogger and, you know, even before then working in various campaigns in my lifetime, I've always felt a more experienced voter as a person who's going to be very methodical and will take it seriously. And the one... Uh, beef, and not a beef, but the one difference between a younger voter and an older voter is that the older voter, basically, it's a commitment, and they will stay, and they will keep coming, so they have experience. And they got, they, they are part of the establishment. Mm -hmm. They are the ones who are going to go down the list, even in the undercard, and vote for who they want to, more than likely, rather than the younger voter, who will more likely bullet vote if they vote. And they will vote for their self-interest. Yes. <laughs> And we're going to head to break and once again uh, listen to the uh, Secretary of Pennsylvania State uh, Secretary Pedro Cortez talking about VotesPA.com. If you're already registered to vote, is to visit VotesPA.com and confirm your registration that you're in fact registered. You'll find on VotesPA.com uh, where's your polling place, how to get there, and if you're voting for the first time, you can even watch videos that will teach you how to use the machine in your counties because the machines are different depending on the county. Welcome back to Newsmakers from your local election headquarters. A blast from the past as we're joined by uh, Dr. David Sosa and David Yonka. What is this? <laughs> this basically is a election guide that WBRE put out in 1968. And as a mere lad of 14, <laughs> I was fascinated by this. This has uh, all of the presidential candidates that were running. And of course, you know, I'm a pack rack and I've saved everything. And LULAC has a lot of archives up in my attic. <laughs> and in here, it's like really incredible. It has all the potential presidential candidates, issues in the 1968 election. And uh, I believe there is um, some promotions here for um, uh, the state 
station. So yeah, the, the station, WBRE put this back, out back in the day. And of course, I still have it. And you also brought us... That's the McGovern... George um, McGovern. That's the George McGovern uh, flyer that came out in 1972. If you turn it around, Andy, you'll see oh, his you second vice presidential um, candidate, Sergeant, Sergeant Shriver, Shriver, who yeah. basically replaced Thomas Eagleton. And then we have a Clinton-Gore campaign poster here. And uh, that was from 1992, and in 2004 there could have been a uh, there could have been a uh, um, Gore uh, Clinton poster if Hillary Clinton ran for vice president. And this is a Republican thing that came out in Washington D.C. And they're talking about uh, Spiro Agnew being the uh, person being vice president again. Well. We thank you for bringing it in. We love it when we have see the political memorabilia. We want to remind everyone to get out and vote Tuesday. Polls open at 7 a.m., close at 8. Watch your vote count here right on Eyewitness News. For Andy Mahalshik, Dr. David Sosa, or David Yonkai, I'm Jane Ann Bugda. For everyone behind the scenes, thank you for making newsmakers from your local election headquarters part of your day. We're under PAHomepage.com.